Hi there, in this video we're going to continue with the derivation of the equations of motions of a double pendulum. Now, in the first video we seen the derivation of the Lagrangian. Now the Lagrangian, given letter L, is equal to the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. Now, this here in the top line is the kinetic energy of the double pendulum, and the bottom line is the potential energy of a double pendulum. Now we're going to use um, the calculus of variations, we'll use the Euler-Lagrange method in order to derive the equations of motion. Now if you're unsure of this Euler-Lagrange and calculus of variations, I've got a playlist there uh, on the calculus of variations and I derive this Euler-Lagrange. So pretty quite quickly, what we have is uh, the variations and the variations are going to equal to zero. So the variation of the Lagrangian with respect to uh, a distance x, so in this case the distance is actually an angular distance to theta, and the variation of L with Lagrangian with respect to the, uh, the the derivative of the distance, which is a velocity, in this case it's a, an angular velocity, um, theta dot. Okay, so let's just go crack on with this. Um, we'll do this part first, okay, so what we're looking at is um, partial L by partial theta 1 of this function here L. Now we're only interested in the terms here in theta 1. Okay, so there's no terms here in theta 1. There is that term there, but it's theta 1 derivative, okay? And we're not interested in that, we're interested in only the terms um, that are in, in theta 1, okay? so. There's nothing in there, okay, nothing in that one. Now, the f this one here, there's nothing in that one either. And this one here, well, there's a, a theta 1 in this one here, okay. So, the, what we can do is we'll write down the constants first. So we're going to have m2, l1, l2, and theta 1 dot just looks like a constant because we're doing partial differentiation with respect to um, a different variable there, okay. So, that theta 2 dot, as the same, just looks like a constant. And now what we're going to do is we're going to um, differentiate this. So that just becomes a sine theta 1 minus theta 2. And that's a negative sign as well, because when we differentiate cos, we get minus sine. Again, this one here, uh, there's a, a dependency here, theta 1, okay? So when we differentiate cos again we get minus sine, so we're going to have minus, and all this here is just a constant, so we're going to have g m1 plus m2 l1, and it's going to be sine of theta1. And there's no um, q theta1 in this term here. Okay, so that's the first part of it. Uh, it gets reasonably straightforward because the um, because it's partial differentiation, a lot of the terms just act like constants. So now we're going to do this part here. So a wee bit more involved than that. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at. I'll move it over a wee bit so we can get everything in. Okay. So um, we're going to look at um, uh, d by dt first of all. So. We're going to look at uh, d by dt of this here, so partial L by partial theta 1 derivative. So again, we're looking at this here and finding the terms here, we've got theta 1 derivative. So that's one of the terms there, so there's theta 1 derivative squared. So uh, the rest of this is going to look like a constant, so we're going to have our half m1 plus m2 l1 squared. Now, this is um, just the chain rule, so we're going to have um, it would be it would be two times, and it would be um, theta one derivative, and then it would be like that d theta by d theta, which would just be would just be um, 1, okay? So 
that d3 divided d8 is just like saying dx now dx is just equal 1. So take that out, okay? And also the term here, the half will cancel with that too, okay? So I can take this out here, I can take the half out there, and all we're going to be left with is that theta 1 dot. Okay, so that's theta 1 dot. Okay, so that's the first part, okay, um, of the um, dl by d theta, which is up here. Okay, now we're interested in the other um, theta 1. There's no theta 1 in this term here. Okay, so um, we move on to the next term now. There's a, a theta 1 here and this term here. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll put in the constants again first. So we're going to have our m2, l1, l2, and we're differentiating. Well, it's uh, theta 1 with respect to theta 1, which is just 1, okay? And uh, the rest of it's just the constants that we're left over with. So that's going to be theta 2 derivative times cos of theta 1 minus theta 2. Okay, so that there is the first part of it. Now, the second part of it, we're going to get, we're going to differentiate this with respect to time. Okay, so I'll just check this with everyone there. M1, M2, L1 squared theta 1 dot M1, M2, L1, L2, theta 2 cos theta 1 minus theta 2. Okay, so we're differentiating this here with respect to time. Now, all of these thetas are uh, dependent on time, okay? So this one, this one, this one, and this one. So all those four terms that are dependent on time. So let's differentiate the first one here. So the first one, let's move it right over to the edge there. So we're going to have m1 plus m2, which is just a constant, and L1 squared again, which is a constant. We differentiate this with respect to time. Now, we already differentiated it once with respect to time. Okay, to get theta dot. So we'll differentiate again with respect to time. So it's theta 1 double dot, which is the second derivative. Now, this one here, well, this is just a constant again. So we're going to have our m to L1, L2. Now, what we have here is... Um, a function of time and another function of time. So that's like having a function u and a function v. Okay, so what we can do is use the product rule for differentiation. So it would be u dv plus v du. Okay, so if we start off here and we'll look at, put a bracket around that because everyone's typing things like that. So we'll differentiate this first. Okay, so you're going to have theta 2 double dot, okay, and we're going to have what's left over here, which is the cos theta 1 minus theta 2, and then we're going to have, well, when we differentiate, uh, we'll keep, this will remain the same, okay, so that's going to be theta 2 dot, and then we're going to differentiate this, now we differentiate cos, you get minus sign, so it'll be minus that there. But this is a function of a function, okay? So we'll have to take this term out and differentiate it, okay? Um, so you end up with your theta 1 dot minus theta 2 dot times the derivative, which is just your sine theta 1 minus theta 2, okay? So... Um, so we just did, we had to take that out because it's a function of a function. So it's, it's a chain rule there as well for differentiating that. Okay. So um, that there is our um, d by dt. Okay. So there's nothing else uh, that we need to do there. So, yep, that's okay. Now, what we're going to have is this part here. Okay. If I, I'll look back at it. I'll just leave it in there. So that part there. Is this here okay now we've got to take away this part here which is this so when we take away these negatives become positives 
So it's equivalent to adding those on. So you're going to have plus, and it's just this section here. So you're going to have our plus M2 L1 L2 theta1 dot theta2 dot sine theta1 minus theta2 minus g m1 plus m2 times l1 sine theta1. Now that whole thing is going to be equal to zero. Okay, so I'll put a wee box around that one there. So that's us done the all the differentiation that's required for the oil of Lagrange. Okay, so the this term here is the top line there, and this term here is the bottom line there, and they're all made to equal zero. Now what we'll do is we'll expand this out and we'll be able to um, simplify it a little. Now this here is going to produce um, two terms, okay? So you're going to have the theta2, theta1 theta dot times sine of theta1, theta2, and you're also going to have theta2 squared dot times sine theta1, theta2, okay? So we're going to end up with 1, 2, and that will give us another 2, so that's 3, 4, and that will give us 5. We're going to end up with 6 terms. So we're going to end up with 6 terms, but 2 of the terms are going to cancel out, okay? So well, this is the probably the longest bit of it, so we get through this, we'll, we, we'll be on our way, okay? So we'll have m1 plus m2 times l1 squared theta double dot 1. Okay, so that's the first term there. We're also going to have m2 l1 l2 theta2 double dot cos theta1 minus theta2, so that's just this second term here, okay. Also going to have a plus m2 l1 l2 going to be theta 2 squared dot sine well, sine theta 1 minus theta 2 which is this part of it here so we've got the minus and we've got uh, the minus there or sorry the minus and the minus there which makes it a plus so it's the theta 2 dot squared times the sine so that's the first part of of this one here now we're also going to have our i can go to the next line there minus let's get this one in so it's going to be m2 l1 l2 theta 2 dot theta 1 dot sine theta 1 minus theta 2 which is the second part of this here so that's the theta 2 times theta 1 okay and it's the negative time this time and I'm going to add on the this section here okay which is the m2 l1 l2 theta 1 dot theta 2 dot sine theta 1 minus theta 2 and finally, we're going to have the last section here, okay, which is this part here. Is that actually should be a plus as well? Okay, so that's a plus. So that's going to be plus 
M1, G, M1, was M2, sin theta 1 equals 0. Okay, so we get our six terms, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, now that term there is the same as that term there. So both these terms cancel out. And in the end, what you're going to be left with um, is the equation m1 plus m2 l1 squared theta1 double dot plus m, now that's that m, m2 is here, l1 l2 theta2 double dot cos theta1 minus theta2 plus m2 l1 l2 theta2 dot squared sine of theta1 minus theta2 and then the last term here is plus l1 g m1 plus m2 sine, I hope I can squeeze this in, sine theta 1. And that whole thing is going to be equal to 0. Okay, so you can see how these uh, mushrooms get, get bigger and bigger. Okay, so that's the final um, differential equation that we're looking for. Now, we actually have to go and do the same thing again. But we have to do it for uh, partial L by partial theta 2 dot and partial L by theta uh, 2. But I'm not going to go and go through all of the derivation for that. It's a similar sort of derivation. I'll just state it here so we can uh, crack on with the rest of this. Okay, so we're going to have M2 L2 theta 2 double dot plus m2 l1 theta double dot cos theta1 minus theta2 minus m2 l1 theta1 squared dot sine theta 1 minus theta 2 plus m g sine theta 2 equals 0. Okay, so that's the second differential equation. So we're ended up with two second order differential equations, okay, that are linked together because I've got um, terms in theta 1 and theta 2 and both of them okay so we'll leave that there for now and we'll look at this uh, these two second order differential equations we'll see a method that we can use in order to uh, chain turn these into four first order differential equations and we'll see how we can put that in matlab in the next video okay thank you for listening goodbye